Hey, what's up guys, how are we doing? So um, if you remember my previous video, I got challenged by Samsung to have the Galaxy S21 Ultra 512 gig for two weeks in the hopes that I will leave my amazing iPhone 12 Pro Max and go with Samsung. Just a little recap for you. So here's the thing. I've been approached by Samsung and um, they know my love of Apple. So you remember the video. So I have been using this um, Galaxy S21 Ultra now for the best part of two weeks and I've got some thoughts. Now I'm gonna tell you my personal thoughts as someone who is deep in the Apple ecosystem. So I hope you enjoy what's about to come. I'm gonna tell you my real views on these two phones um, how I got on with it, what my thoughts are, some of the things I found really frustrating and issues that I never knew were there until I switched to this. So should we get into this? Let's do it. So some of the things I loved about this phone, I think the build quality of, of this phone is, is a work of engineering, it's fantastic. I love the way, now I, I presented this to my family and they really didn't like the way that the cameras were there. I, I quite like it, I think it's quite nice. The feel and the hold of the phone is really good. Um, it's got 512 gig, that's their top of the range phone. Would I buy that? I don't think I need it. I only have, uh, I only have 256 gig on my iPhone and I've never really used any of that. I'm not even a quarter of it. Maybe, I mean, when I take my pictures, I get them into the iCloud. I don't need that much storage. So, you know, I, I, the 512 gig, it, it comes with the Exynos uh, processor. Um, I'm not going to sit here and spill you with the load of stats. If you want anything like that, there are hundreds of other videos on this, on this device that will give you all those lovely statistics that you may want to uh, know about. So let's get into this. So aesthetically, the way that the phone looks and feels, I love that we have the on-screen display and notifications. Um, and every time that I switch this phone on and switch off and on and off and on, I get this lovely, different, beautiful screen. So that's a really nice touch Samsung. I also was like as well, can in, before when you used to swipe to the right, you would get just the Bixby news, which no one really takes care of notice of. Um, now you can uh, choose Google news, a really nice touch. Um, so aesthetically, how it's built solid, the way that it works, it's good. Are, it's, it's a really nice piece of kit. So let's get on to the cameras. So between these two phones, they have very similar looks. However, see what you think in some of this footage. here is the front-facing camera on the Samsung Galaxy S21. Um, this is on full auto HD so um, I can't tell by the clarity of this so um, as you can see um, the stabilization side of it you know walking along uh, it seems really good. The weather there's a lot of wind in the air so I don't know what it's going to sound like when you see this footage but it seems okay. It, the clarity on the screen for me is very clear um, it's, it's quite nice. Um, I think we're going to do some um, some shots as well on the um, the camera. So we'll take it from there. So this is the front facing camera on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Um, again, um, I don't know why, but it does seem on the screen itself a little bit shaky. So I'm holding and steady in my arm there. Now there is a bit of wind and I've got this on my um, on my uh, gimbal, uh, so to speak. It's not, it's not a steady gimbal, it's just a solid gimbal. So you can see here the the clarity on the screen looks really good. Um, again, I don't know what this mic, the front-facing mic will sound like. We'll get that back to the studio and we'll check and compare this with the Galaxy S21 and you can make your own opinion on it. So yeah, it's, it's really good. Visualization wise, um, it's really good. Happy with it. Some of the images that I've taken, I'll do side by side as you can see here. Um, I kind of think they are, it's going to be down to personal preference. I think that's going to be the big thing here. It's going to be what you like. 
Um, for me, I like, I think the cameras on the S21 are really good. However, I think what Apple do with their cameras is amazing. Um, the um, voice uh, microphone for the Samsung S21 is outstanding. The stabilization, once it's switched on, is outstanding, but equally just as good as Apple. Apple is leading the front when it comes to videography in their phones. Um, and with the images, um, you know, there's not much to choose between them. So another issue that I faced with this um, was using the um, Google Pay. I mean, I can't use the Samsung Pay because they don't really support many banks. So I had to use the Google Pay. Um, I, it was just really, it was really a frustrating experience. I mean, um, I just struggled with how long it actually took uh, to use the Google Pay system uh, with, you know, from regards to double clicking the button to holding it down to the register, waiting for the whole thing to materialize and then make the payment. Now it's only a few seconds, of course, it's not a, it's not a massive deal, but when you've got a phone that just double click, boom, it's done, it's another one of those little hiccups. Um, another um, situation, in fact, let me just show you. Hey Bixby, call Georgina. And this is the problem. I've now got to unlock my phone to make that call. Whether I use Google or whether I use Bixby, I have to unlock my phone, it won't just call. Whereas if I'm using the iPhone, it just does it, it makes the call. I don't understand what the difference is, why it does that. If anyone can hit me up in the comments on this, I'd love to know. And you see, that is my sole problem. That is one of the, these are frustrations that I didn't have before that I now have now changing over to the Samsung Galaxy S21 Pro Plus, whatever you want to call these crazy names that they have. But I'm not going to take away from the fact that this device is an incredible device. And if you are in the Samsung ecosystem um, with the watch and the buds, uh, you've got a Windows machine because that's what this is now doing. It's forcing you to go with OneDrive, connect to a Windows machine, it wants you to be part of that. I think it's slowly starting to work with Google with some of the things that it's doing, and it is an incredible device. But when you look at the two of them together, for me being so deep in the Apple ecosystem, I just don't see that this gives me the headaches I didn't have before to what now the iPhone ecosystem gives with me. So let's talk a little bit about Apple. So if you're looking to buy a device and you're already, you know, maybe your wife or your mum or your aunts or your kids, they've got Apple devices, iPads, whatever, there's no reason I can see to change because this phone right here is an incredible piece of hardware tech. Yes, I know some people are taking the mickey out of the notch in the year 2021 uh, when it shouldn't be, but for me, it's not a big deal. The phone had to hold the, 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 the quality build of this. But the most important thing, you see, it's not just about how seamlessly the software and the hardware integrate with this. It's also about the ecosystem that is now Apple. You know, down to the way Apple Music or Spotify integrates. So if I'm using um, AirPods Pro or just the AirPods, how I just seamlessly connect it and it works. When I'm listening to music, I can just take a call on my earbuds. I can change what's going on with my watch. I can take a call. I get directions. I can change music. All It's just simplified. When messages come in, I can take them through my iPad, my Mac, my MacBook. I, when I'm playing music, I can just tap to the HomePod and it will transfer across. If I'm on a call, I can tap to the HomePod. It will transfer across. Apple TV, it all seamlessly integrates. And the hardware, you know, this is just the ecosystem that I'm talking about when it comes to Apple. But really, the hardware, it's, it's, it's really good. The cameras are really good. You'd be hard pressed to beat them. The video quality, if you're videoing yourself like that or you're doing videos, I know a couple of YouTubers that use their iPhone to do all their videos. You know, the, the quality of these products are good. 
but it does depend if you are in the ecosystem. You know, if you are not in any ecosystem, you know, this is what this video is about. It depends on what you want. Some, you might have a Windows machine at home, then fine, you might be better suited to the Samsung. But I've got to say this, if I was to go to Android, on a serious note, I still would not pick up Samsung. Now I know you're all gonna be shouting at me in the comments, I get it. And here's why, Google, this is the Google Pixel 3 XL. I've had this phone now for a few years, I used it because I used to have one for work, one for home. I tend to, this don't really happen anymore because this is what happened. The battery expanded on this, um, which is a known fault with Google. However, the phone still works. And when I put it side by side with the Samsung, speed wise, there weren't really much in it. Screen wise, yeah, you know the Samsung is going to be a little bit better and there's that big horrible notch on this. But you know what I love most? I love the flavor that the fact that Google have built their software to work with the hardware, the Google engineering, the software that they've done. I don't want to be forced to be using Samsung's apps. I know they're getting rid of the Samsung Cloud and moving to OneDrive. I know that they're working, you know, I, I just don't want to use, you know, the Samsung Pay, Google Pay just works. Um, if I was going to go across, also as well, some of the stuff that I do with my business is on G Suite. You know, I also use Google Photos to back up my iCloud photos. So I have a, a two copies of them. I would just go with the Google phone. And also as well, the new Google phone is only 600 pounds. The battery on it is really good. It's a mid range phone. If you look at some of the reviews on it, it's a very, very good phone. I don't think I would be paying 1300 pounds for a phone to use apps I don't really want to use to have to change all the default apps to use that I want to use with Google. And I found mistakes and irritations using the Samsung that I just didn't have before. So I hope this video has helped you in your decision making. I'm hoping that I've outlined some of the things that I found frustrating in, in my process, in the challenge that I had to live with the Samsung whilst in this system. And I appreciate Samsung for the challenge, I really do. But there's just, I just don't see a future with me with a Samsung device at the moment. I, if I was gonna go back to an Android or have two phones, it would, for me, would just be the Google. I just don't want the extra skins. I just like the vanilla of Android, how Google intended it to be. So please, as always, um, this is a new channel. I wanna get some love out there. Please make sure you hit that subscribe. And when you hit the notification bell, make sure you select all. It will notify you in some of the videos I'm gonna be doing. It's all about tech. Thank you for watching. This has been the Samsung Galaxy S21 versus the iPhone Pro 12 Max review. I'll see you in the next one.